ghost stories to develop. People who die violently, those that are murdered, many times stories develop as if those ghosts are lingering until justice is done or they're still convicted and sentenced to die here for that murder. They were brought and imprisoned in the old French colonial prison that stood where that row of buildings is across the garden. On the night before their execution the next morning, those three men were brought out of the prison yard. They were strapped alive, spread eagle to the wheels of three very large wooden cars. You'll find he was a very interesting fellow. Uh, he was, uh, one time it was said he tried to participate in the overthrow of Catherine the Great of Russia. He had several little occultic groups that grew up around him. One time the Rosicrucians claimed him as a member, and uh, when he died, many of his followers said he was a vampire. In 1906, the gentleman who moved into this building called himself Jacques Saint Germain, and he claimed to be a direct descendant of the Count. He lived there very quietly until one evening. He lured a young lady into the building, and he bit her on the neck. She comes out of those two doors, swoons on the sidewalk, just as a policeman riding his horse on the beats coming down the street. He scoops her up. He takes her to Charity Hospital, where she is pronounced dead. She had bled to death because he had bitten through her juggler vein. Now the police came here looking for Jacques St. Germain and he was never to be seen in the city again. But when they broke into the building to look for him, they found the wooden floors upstairs and downstairs sticky and stained with human blood. Among the things they confiscated out of the house that night was his wine collection. When they analyzed the bottles of the wine, most of the bottles were wine. Two of the bottles were filled with human blood. Most people to be the world's chest demons. He's buried three tombs down from Marie Laveau, the voodoo queen in St. Louis Cemetery. When Morphy was 12 years old, the known world who could defeat him in chess. To commemorate this aspect of his home, he out in the kitchen. This was the kitchen, always separate in case of fire. The firemen arrived. The 1800s, that was the home of Carlos Ruello. Carlos Ruello would forever go down in the annals of New Orleans history as Carlos the Butcher. Carlos, a butcher was what he was. Carlos had a problem. He loved the ladies. He just could not find anybody to marry him. Finally, at the age of 38, Carlos falls head over heels in love with a little 17-year-old girl here in the city by the name of Luisa. Now, there was one small hitch. In order to get Luisa's hand in marriage, Mama had to come along with a deal. You see, Luisa's father had died, and Luisa was counting on, uh, uh, her mother was kind of counting on Luisa to look after her.